Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 10 of Eggenborough, our City Skylines 2 Let's Play. Hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's episode, we're going to bring trains into the city for the first time. I've been really excited to play with trains in Cities 2, having them unlocked so much earlier than they were in CS1. I want to make sure that we really make sure they flow through the town, to outside connections and also to other towns as well, once they exist, of course. I really want to make sure that Eggenborough has a proper flowing and efficient train infrastructure. So we're going to start today's episode with a ton of terraforming to make sure that these lines all flow and connect in correctly. We'll also bring them across the river and we'll place the train station in today's time lapse as well uh, before we start developing some more density with the zoning around this part of the city. So enjoy your time lapse and I'll catch you in the live play. Welcome back to live playing Eggenborough, everyone. So the landscape around West Whiskey has uh, significantly changed now to accommodate uh, the train lines that now dominate this landscape. Uh, so this one here runs back down towards the rail yard that we set up last episode. And we've also prepared a new line to cross the gorge and eventually run over to meet up with this one over here. It'll also give us the ability to have intercity trains traversing this distance as well. Well, that's a long way away. <laughs> so... Uh, what I want to do today is bring in our first intercity connections because I'd love to have some trains arriving uh, at Whiskey Train Station. So let's also have a look at some upgrades here. 
Um, extra platforms. I don't think we need that right now, do we? Uh, subway interfacing, and we've not played with subways. I actually don't think we'll end up playing with Metro in this map at all, you know, just with the way I'm planning to build it. Um, I love a taxi stop, and I'd also love some station services as well. That seems pretty cool to me, because there's a little bit of a dip in the terrain there. We'll sort that out in a second. But what we will do now is draw in our first train line together. So let's see where we want this to come. So this one here is going to be an internal line that runs around that way. So it's currently not active. So our only platform at the minute is going to be this one. So we discovered last episode as well that we can actually uh, rename our outside connections, didn't we? So I think rather than just name it after you know, all of my old Cities 1 builds, um, I would love to have one of your cities as an outside connection. So please leave in the comments today uh, one of your city skylines build names that we can rename to this one. If you want to leave a little bit of story about your city, you can do, but um, you guys can name one of these outside connections, so <laughs> well, let me know what you can come up with and obviously what you built and then we'll name it that next episode. But that is the external connection, so let's wait for a train to arrive now. So here's our first train arriving into the city. And I'm quite keen to see it traverse this little rail bridge we've got coming over the river for some reason. Also like that it's slightly higher than the highway as well. Quite a nice bit of infrastructure that, isn't it? Yes, please. And then really cool approach into the west side of Whiskey here now as well, isn't it? With uh, the castle and the cathedral coming into view from the train line almost immediately. Big fan of that. I'm going to come along here. And then is anyone going to get off? Hopefully they are. No, not so. <laughs> not a single person wants to come to Edinburgh. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, but either way, we do have the train station in now, so let's start adding some things in around here because I've got a quite a specific th way I want this to look. I imagine I want some row housing um, surrounding the uh, train line there, but we'll worry about that when we do have some medium density demand. So for right now, I just want to grab some pathway to break the zone in here of the main street. I'm just going to recorrect it onto this one. And I think here, we're just going to go for some tasteful European commercial. Don't mind a little bit of density, I guess. Should we go for one high density business here? Let's we'll see if we can mix and match it a little bit, I think. And then in terms of what happens outside the station, um, we do have a tram line that uh, terminates here. And we can also bring the buses along as well, which will actually bring the bus... Yeah, that's going to make sense with the BRT, isn't it? If we bring that BRT and the tram line, um, both up this road, they can converge at the train station. Also with an intercity connection as well, which is going to be super useful for public transport, isn't it? So let's develop that tram space at the front of the station. Um, in terms of the bus, do we want to have a bus station in here? Quite large and expensive, aren't they? So I think we'll actually build our own custom one like we did earlier. Uh, so let's start with trams. So I imagine they're both going to come up this road eventually. So we'll have it come off here and then you can just come through here. Let's turn road guide snapping here as well. Uh, what was the measurement from here actually? Can we just redraw that? It was 62 meters. So let's make sure we do that out of this one as well. Fabulous. There we go. That gives us a little bit of a tram plaza right at the front there. And then we want to upgrade some of these roads hold those trams as they come back around the university. Uh, I bet there's a really nice opportunity here actually for some open green belt spaces isn't there to work in with these these tram lines. Yeah it can cut across the field here and then we'll just replace this pathway with tram line I imagine. Uh, can we meander around here in a relatively nice fashion I hope. And then we can meet back up with of course the eventual tram line over here as well can't we so let's go ahead and do that I'll try not to remove too many trees although i think they are just generally in the way aren't they so do my best fabulous and that does complete the tram loop doesn't it and then we can get all these pathways back in as well And then let's also upgrade this tram line all the way back to... Where do we want to take this? Um, if we were to 
bring it across here. I think that's the most sensible solution rather than putting it on the couplet system. We'll just have the tram line cut straight across there on the 90 degree angle. And then it can just connect up with here and we'll build a little bit of a neighborhood out this way. And we can have the tram line run right up this road and then meet up with that. And that does complete another tram loop extension. Well, it will once we add it in here anyway. Cool, yeah. So now it can be mirrored on both sides. This tram line is going to change quite significantly. So currently it's stopping there, which is okay. Let's also add another couple of stops over here as well. We'll do two more outside of the university. As you know, that's a little bit close to the train station, isn't it? It's a little bit redundant. So let's have one here and here. Uh, again, this will be residential eventually, so it'd be useful to have one there. And then we'll also stop it on the little green belt space. And then we'll have one here and here. And this tram belt can actually just be destroyed now. It doesn't need to be here anymore. And then we just want to remove that. So let's get these tram lines now configured because of course it needs to be uh, essentially two separate lines now. So we'll do that and then we can watch them flow. So we've got some people knocking about at the taxi stand, and I absolutely love <laughs> that his residence is the Edinburgh Royal Mile, how appropriate. Really like that we've named that street. Maybe we need to do some more street naming to have things like that come across. I think that'd be quite nice, wasn't it? There was crap textures in the background, man. I really hope they fix that soon. <laughs> it's making it so nauseating to look at some of the textures sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, but either way, it would appear people are now uh, chilling by the train station. Although not too many people are arriving from the outside connection yet, which is a bit disappointing. But it can only get busier, right? So what I'd like to do with this space here is to actually bring out a pedestrian street. And I'd love to line this up at the front of the station. Um, let's go for no snap in here so we can centralise. Yeah, come down about there. Trams might freak out a little bit, but it'll be okay, they'll be fine. And then, and like, where would be like a natural progression? I guess like walking onto this square here should be good. So I think the Sims will kind of walk off the back of buildings, won't they? There's a good example of that happening over here, I think. Yeah, you see how the kind of texture extends and they'll walk off the back of a building onto a pathway or a road if it's there behind it. I kind of want that same idea to translate over here. So if we have that come straight across, do we then want to fully pedestrianise this section? I think it probably do. And then my idea here is that people can leave the train station, walk directly outside of it, and then just cross the university plaza into the cathedral plaza is my thinking behind that at least anyway. Well, hopefully, see how that turns out. There's some of our high density as well. European high density commercial. I don't mind that at all. Is that a little hotel? It's quite fancy, isn't it? Um, let's get a bit more high density around there then. I wouldn't mind a little bit of height around this area. Not lots of height though, only occasionally. Absolutely wonderful. We're already seeing people now taking that pedestrian street. Got Maddie Montoya. And she's just gonna meander down to the tram stop issue. Both sides of the line getting used as well. There you go, there's one of them. That goes off. That could do with a little bit of slope in there, couldn't it? We'll do that in a second. Then the other one comes back through. I'm just going to pick these people up. Look at this. Look at that. Awesome. I really like that. So I'd love to possibly explore having some very tiny commercial here. Almost to try and help detail the tram stops is what I want there. Now some little props would go a long way. I imagine we'll do a fair bit of bush lining down the middle of the... Uh, pedestrian pathway here, showing the details on maps. 
I know that there is a whole bunch of mods now available via the Thunderstorm, um, away from official Paradox mods, of course. I'm a little bit reluctant to use those, purely for the fact that it kind of comes with a warning that it could break a save, and I really, really do not want to lose a save <laughs> for Eggenborough. So it's unlikely we'll dive into mods on this series until they arrive via the Paradox shop, but we'll see what happens again. But I'm really starting to enjoy this visual over here. So this is very much going to be kind of the edge of whiskey over this way. So I'd like to have uh, some little bridges that pop over to the other side if at all possible. I don't know how viable this is actually going to be with the infrastructure that's already here. Yeah, it's not going to cross there, is it? It's just too high. And that's okay though, because we can do some terraforming here. As the train line falls gradually downhill, we can manipulate the terrain in front of it to just not do that. And then we'll do a little bit of softening here, make it blend back in with the main road. And then we can use that other layer on the other side to our advantage over here, right? So this is where I said I wanted quite a lot of that row housing. Um, again, just for an aesthetic look, I'm not after it to satisfy any particular demographic here with row housing. Just how I want the space to look, I think. So let's go with pathway here come right up into a bridge let's go for 8.75 meters let's go a little bit higher than that can't we i think what we should also do is prepare the terrain on this side of the truck as well and we'll push this back up to the edge of the platform like that so my terraforming brush disappears there for some reason I think what we will do is really push the terrain up against the rail line and then we'll use um, a touch of soften and that'll just make it seem like it's kind of a more purposely kind of dug trench if you like to accommodate the rail line as it's come through the neighborhood here it looks like we can just cross in one smooth motion like that which i'm happy with i like that it does leave us with quite the terrain deficit over this side though so i think we'll slope up from this road here and then just blend this new height into the terrain like so there we go cool and then imagine we'll get some housing out here as well let's also do the same thing over here to a slope up from this side blend that back in so let's zone up with said row housing i don't want to take it all the way to the end and it's not going to come in for a hot little minute yet. I imagine we need to satisfy some education demand, do we, to start triggering some more uh, medium density demand. How is our demographics doing at the minute, actually? Let's just have a little look over. We've got 24% unemployment. <laughs> I really, really need to zone some more um, some jobs in, don't we? We really do. Otherwise, all the workspaces are filled with what they need, at least. That sounds a good sign. Uh, I think let's keep bringing in a little bit of high density office then, uh, high density commercial just to supply some jobs. What do we get happening over here? We're different high density assets in here, isn't there? That's high density, that's low density. Not too bad, is it? What sort of size are we playing with there with that zoning? 2x4, okay. Let's uh, continue to zone some commercial here then. And uh, we'll keep it with fairly sensible zoning sizes because I don't want massive kind of chunky commercial towers to dominate here. So we'll go with that. And then uh, same thing over here I reckon. Let's keep all this commercial going in. We'll try a few different sizes. What might you know the occasional bigger one? Let's go for like a chunky number there I think. It's quite nice isn't it? Big beautiful buildings. And we'll have that there as well. Fabulous. Hopefully that's going to complement the mixed use quite nicely here too. I'll have to wait and see. Can we get a small one in there as well? Yes, we can. I'll be last. Uh, how do we feel about these little commercial units helping to detail the tram stops? Not horrendous, is it? This gives a, a couple of props or some sort of texture there, maybe. That's kind of more what I'm after. Getting a right old number of people coming out the train station now as well. Aren't we? One thing I really missed from Cities 1 is the number shown of how many people have come through the station in a week but that was really just nice to know but uh, we don't get that anymore and there are now finally people here waiting to take the train as well which is good 
So I'm happy with that. So I think there's Main Street coming up to the train station. We're also going to um, commercialise as well. I think we'll have a fair bit of low density knocking around here. I'll just come all the way through. Don't want to be too massive either. Um, that's okay there. What I definitely do want to do actually before we uh, continue with the zoning is to make sure we allocate the space for uh, that row housing to come in all through this space here. Have another one there as well. So all this will be row housing one day. And I imagine we'll also make sure this pattern repeats on this side as well. And we'll do... How much room here do we have? That should be enough, I think. So we'll paint out that road frame. Although I don't want the grid to break though, so let's make sure we have the right options for that on. Cool. And then in between that, we'll just divide up these blocks of row housing with some alley roads occasionally. Something like that, I imagine. And then that pattern will flow down and we'll get that in uh, during our detail and time lapse. And so we finally made a little bit of dent in that commercial demand. I'd also love to start experimenting with some high density office. Um, you know, if we're going to grow this in, maybe we can have some sort of pristine high density office around the university. We'll see just how that pans out because these are kind of real big boy towers right there. They, they get pretty big, these ones. Also, put up mind a bit of regular office in here as well. Try and mix and match the densities today to create a bit more of a little town centre feeling, you know. A little bit of high density is definitely more than welcome. Very nice. People using the trams too. Let's also maybe bring a little alleyway road down here. I don't want it all to be row housing, so I guess we can have you know, some low density designs in here. Let's see what we can do. Just bring up a couple of little offshoots, chuck in a tiny roundabout as well, why not? I'll we'll have one there too. And we will just have some single story homes knocking out this way. There we go. And again, try to keep them 40. You don't want to be enormously expensive in rent either. How tall is that office block going to grow? Is that just a 2x2, two two, is it? Not too horrendous, I guess. See how it blends in with the university. Look at it's such an old style building. Oh, yeah, there you go. There's one of them in already, isn't there? Don't hate it. I don't hate it, I don't think. I definitely do hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I really don't want that here. I reckon we'll just keep this open green space. Let's get a park in here as well, actually. Uh, can we go for... All oh, the landmarks are a little too big here. Let's get a couple of basketball courts in, I think. And... An outdoor gym in this little pedestrian area. It'll be quite a lot of fun, I think. And... We've got a little bit of re repeated tower action there, haven't we? Uh, that's a little more palatable thing, isn't it? I don't mind that. I've hey, also got a load of little mini spaces around here as well, which again, I wouldn't mind filling with uh, some commercial and, I guess, car parking design. It's probably most appropriate out here. Let's have that one there. Again, we could probably... Yeah, you will actually go under the bridge, won't you? So, why not if it's going to go there? And then we'll let that road uh, peel back off and into current existing road infrastructure and then make any sensible connections. It looks like it might connect in like that. I guess you might as well just carry on straight here as well, right? Yeah, there we go. People are starting to use this side of the castle road now as well. I envision that this road here, or this train, is going to cross over and serve areas over this way. We've got some abandonment and high rent, haven't we? Uh, how are we doing for a We're making 115 grand an hour. God, yeah, maybe we are. I do have some. <laughs> slightly. Slightly too high taxes. Let's bring everyone down a little bit. We're making a ton of money. Um, although the highly educated can continue to be taxed. Bring everyone else down a little bit. But otherwise, we're starting to make some pretty really decent money from the economy now. So hopefully that's going to be okay and continue to go that way. Let's also take a look at the new development here from the castle as well. Yeah, it's not bad. We like seeing the trams move through these spaces too. Really nice addition into the little cathedral plaza over here, isn't it? Don't mind that at all. There are some rather nice assets within the commercial pool, actually. Um, if we journey back to downtown Edinburgh for a second. God, what is with the 
the texture popping. I feel like the last update has made the texture popping significantly worse. That's a kind of nauseating to look at. Um, but there's also over here, right? With a load of people just stood outside, it must be a busy place, right? Uh, yeah, but this is a really cute asset. It's managed to stay in, thankfully. The, um, I think it's a hotel, is it? Yeah, it provides lodging. So, uh, really nice one. A little beer garden at the back there as well. A little downtown hotel. So hopefully we can get one of these in. This was um, just low density, wasn't it? And that was like the full 6x6. Six six. So 6x6 six six low density can actually look really nice when it's all fully grown. Just have to get to level 5 first, of course. And uh, I would really love to appreciate the view up to Edinburgh Castle. But the, uh, <laughs> the texture poppins are horrific. Really, really bad. It's definitely gotten worse with that most recent patch, hasn't it? But yeah, okay. Whatever then. Enjoy the blurred view sight line up to Castle Edinburgh, anyway. Yeah, so let's get some car parking in here as well. I feel like we do neglect car parking quite a lot in Edinburgh. Not that the mechanic seems to be massively fleshed out anyway. But we will at least provide some. I'll have some there like that. And again, it makes no sense for that one to be there either. So let's put that away. We'll have that there. I actually wouldn't mind maintaining this path. It kind of would make sense here, wouldn't it? So it's going to come off all of our snapping. Always makes it a lot easier. And then it's coming from the side here. Are you going to connect? No? <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's do it from this way. We'll just go from um, top to bottom like that. Cool. Because I guess they don't really need to connect into that bridge anyway, do they? Then is there room for trees there? Maybe we got a couple of little almond pines in this way. We give them the room to grow either side of the bridge. And then we'll have that come down here. Look into the bottom. We also provide a bit more walkability between uh, the little layers that are starting to develop around uh, West Whiskey now. I was really looking forward to getting trains factored into the city so early, you know, just so we can see all these little layers develop. There's, um... The shots over here, you know, like once we got trains running all the time through this, it's going to be really cool, isn't it? Really enjoy seeing the layout. I'll do a lot of trees through here as well today, I think. As we do begin to round out the side of West Whiskey. Cool, so I also wouldn't mind a little bit more um, low density accommodation out this way. Now you're not going to play fair there, are you? That's okay though. We'll bring it out this side. We'll get some more low density around the police station. We well, actually wouldn't mind a bit of commercial uh, on that main couple of street either, coming into town. Junction's also changed over here as well now. So I think it's got to be said, I've really enjoyed how all that kind of smaller, high density uh, zoning has paid off. Especially when you get down the street level here, enjoying it. Don't mind it. I wonder how much different the um, American is to this stuff. I haven't really played with it before, switching between the zones. Why don't we grab a little bit of North American high density? And again, I just want to run it in those same small designs, if at all possible. So you can see here where that zoning has gravitated toward the main road. So let's just re-correct that. Because I think I'd prefer the commercial uh, facing into this sort of central square here. So we'll see how well it behaves. Have a lot of that there. And I think I'd also like to repeat the same thing here as well. Let's move that parking next to the station. Can we also even... Can we double that up? Can we go for a medium one? Large would be too big, right? Yeah. We can definitely do medium though. Let's switch that small one out for medium car park here next door. Uh, put it right next door though. There we go. And then, yeah, another... Try a North American high density here. See what grows up. We'll see how we get on. But um, I really enjoyed the way this has all come together today. It's nice to have some trains finally flowing around. No, just a shame we won't get the row house in here, but we'll definitely zone it up and one day it'll come in, I guess. But uh, well, lots of people moving through here as well, aren't they? I wonder where you're all coming from. Is so you just coming to move into the low density housing out here now? Mm. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Back to European. <laughs> Back to European. Yeah. Uh, not the vibe I want at all. So we'll uh, let them regrow at least in specific instances. So for 3x3s, 2x2s, 
European's definitely nicer, I think, with the high density commercial, at least with those smaller zonings anyway. Cool. And before we do head into a detail in town, let's actually let's have a little catch up uh, with some of our patrons. So Joshua has moved in with Brittany. Uh, he did get divorced, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He left Marion. But either way, he's wealthy and doing well. He's also still an adult too. Ross Hicks married Denton. Wonderful. So many happy marriages in the <laughs> of the patrons. Uh, casinos now working at LH Clothing. Fantastic. Well, Steve Goodwin's also met his special someone. He got 546 likes on that. Goodness me. And then Rich and Steve are both seniors now as well. Oh, Rich isn't doing too well. He's since retired now, but he is wretched and idling. Chris Altman's broke up with his missus, although he's hashtagged his emotion, <laughs> which is never a good thing, is it? Uh, and then we did have um, one more person to add as well before the patron. So we're going to follow Julia, and Julia is going to become Claire, because Claire has been a very long time support with the channel, and she did ask for a sim after herself. Dominic's got his dream job, he's doing wealthy, he's living at 42 Applegate Lane. Where is that? Can we, can we head over there? Where is he? He's in the row housing over by the town square, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He lives over here. Pretty nice place to live over here, to be fair. Dominic's doing all right for himself. Sarah Ducky's got... Sarah doesn't go up to much, does she? We've been following Sarah for a few years now, and she's only done one thing. <laughs> she got hired, so... Congratulations, Sarah. You finally did something with your life. But then Jeeba's left River Green as well. A lot of breakups happening today, isn't there? Otherwise, guys, I think we'll move into a swift time lapse now. Uh, when I want to carry on developing Main Street some commercial. I also want to fill out this space as well, probably with a little office park design just to try and satiate some of these demands because we have pretty high unemployment, but uh, I'm much happier with the smaller European commercials are in here. Much less dominant than the, the um, North American ones, aren't they? And uh, I think they've actually served quite nicely faced into the plaza. And we've got some parks in here as well, trees and detail and whatnot. And hopefully by the time we zone up some of these commercials and uh, offices as well, we will be able to have at least some row housing in today's build. Because I do want row housing all around this area. Otherwise, let's do some detailing. And then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, let's have a little review of this space, shall we? So we ended up bringing in some low rent housing over here just because we had demand spike for it again. I saw some tower blocks here on the entrance to the cobble system. And then we come down, all this now is commercial and it's nice and busy and there's a lot of petrol stations here, <laughs> which is slightly annoying, but we can deal with it. Uh, during our detailing time lapse, our medium density demand did actually spike pretty hard, so we ended up getting all the row housing in here. And absolutely love uh, row housing on a hill. It's very nice, isn't it? Really worked. This sort of stuff was totally impossible in cities. One like building on a hill was a nightmare. But uh, these row houses in particular are uh, quite nice to just sort of look out on the hill. I mean, really like them, how it turned out. And, uh, what a wonderful view now on a crawl across kind of the whole of Whiskey with the castle here. The cathedral really dominates the skyline, doesn't it? I see the downtown over there as well with a few towers and the bridge. I really love this view in particular. Uh, we'll come over here as well where we do have some more apartments over this side. I'm making a use of a lot of the green space around the university as well, really respecting the sight lines that we set up when we did the cathedral build. Making sure that we don't zone them in just because we've got the space there. Uh, further around here now against our uh, kind of train station plaza, I guess. A uh, really nice use of the pedestrian road with plazas. Uh, some bush detailing through here as well. And our commercials all grown up now. Uh, because we did have that demand, we've also got some more mixed use along this bit of the street as well, which turned out quite nicely. Alongside also introducing mixed use onto the corner uh, of the street over here. Because when we do get kind of shattered zoning like this, the mixed use, it kind of extends its texture out towards like a nearest radius. So we yeah, actually kind of like a mini, very rudimentary, albeit surface painter mechanic with the mixed density, uh, mixed use here. So I'm happy to have this on the street corner as we enter at Whiskey from this side. And then of course it goes off and about and you can come out here into uh, the Cathedral Plaza, which is currently glitching. And then just a really nice view uh, from the castle as well down to this new development here today. I really like the small uh, zoning of the high density commercial. That gives us a much sort of nicer option than the huge towers. But again, some of the larger towers are quite welcome in a little build like this. So really happy with how it's all turned out. And really nice to have trains in here as well. More so sort of uh, wait for a tram to turn up and see just how much use our little lines are getting here. I love the aesthetic of a fence as well. How much is fencing missing? <laughs> really, really miss my fencing. Yeah, trams are getting a nice bit of use now as well. So those West Whiskey tram loops getting a fair bit of use. And of course, not forgetting, they're also stopping in with tram lines over here, outside the cathedral, which is just getting busier and busier. And then it also interacts with the BRT system down this way as well. So lots of interconnecting public transport now starting to appear in Whiskey, which is really important. And then I think what we're going to do with these spaces right on the outskirts of town, I imagine one day we'll probably upgrade this national road here into a dual carriageway setup, kind of similar to what we did over by the port last episode. But for right now, the National Road is flowing. But if this does get busier, I expect a dual carriageway to appear here. And we've got these two big spaces where I think we're going to save this for a big industrial build to use one of the big service assets, whatever that may be. Maybe a landfill site out here. Uh, or indeed another rail yard when indeed we do need one because there's a lot of rail infrastructure for it to connect into here. So a rail yard would make sense, but of course we, just, we don't need it yet. But once we do, uh, we do have a big kind of industrial space out here on the edge of Whiskey. I really love all the layers um, that developed in today's episode as the trains kind of traverse different heights as they come in and out of the town. And uh, once the new town of either Inverneg or Bourbon exists over in the mining town, which we'll get into possibly next episode now, uh, we've already got this line hooked in and ready to go. So lots of really nice layers uh, coming and going in today's episode, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, piecing together this side of West Whiskey. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, those likes, comments, and shares below really go a long way in helping to bring more people to the channel. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. Thank you for all the support last week. I know you guys said you were enjoying the much slower pace we're taking. Egg and Brad do feel like sometimes we're maybe going too slow, but it's, uh, it's a fine balance between refining our CS1 playstyle to how CS2 behaves now. But um, it's really nice. I'm really enjoying piecing together whiskey. And the town's gotten a lot bigger than I ever thought it would, but, you know, we are playing with a county build, so several larger towns is always a fun thing to get involved with. As I mentioned, we'll probably head over toward the mining town next episode and just go and establish a new kind of road frame, play with some different ideas over there. An enormous shout out to the patrons that support the channel with a special roll call to Felix Wilkinson. Massively appreciate all the patrons. If you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting the work we do here on the Overcharged Egg channel, all links are down below. Please do enjoy your cinematics, but otherwise I'll shut up and leave it there. 
Otherwise, let's thank you all so much indeed for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.